Welcome everyone to the Sykes Pit Bike Championship. We're here in the heart of Kentucky. I'm Jimmy Coleman, as always, alongside the infamous Trevor Piranha. Jimmy, I'm stoked to be here back at Ryan Sipes' compound for the Bluegrass Brawl. We were here once before. It was an absolute party. I'm stoked to see how things unfold this time. Well, here in 2021, it's not just one event. It's a triple crown, and we are fresh off the Farm 14 throwdown in Mississippi. Talk about some of your standout moments from that. Yeah, I mean, so the biggest takeaways right now, uh, Ryan Sipes is leading the points, followed closely by Joe Dirt, uh, Troy Smalls, and then Ryan's brother, Pooh, coming in fourth. So it's a pretty tight field. Can't wait to see how all the points stack up at this event. Now, speaking of points, it's an individual race, but we also have the team challenge as well. After that first stop, it's TB Parts out in the lead. However, not too far behind, you got Power Plus, and then you got the Black Rifle Coffee Company team. Yeah, Jimmy, but I think the biggest takeaway is at the start of the Wyndham race, Wyndham wasn't gonna race, he just built the track for us. He built a massive track, right? And then lost a couple riders and he stood in. But once he got so high up in the points with his team, we talked him into coming out to Ryan Sipes' house, and he's a busy man. He's running cattle, he's got a farm, he's got a motocross track, he's got gyms, he's got all kinds of stuff going on. But when you're in a points championship, he couldn't help but come out here. We couldn't drag him away. Yeah, it was a hell of a time down there at his compound in Mississippi. However, it's going to be a little bit different here in Vine Grove, Kentucky. For more on that right now, let's check in with the third member of our team, Jared Taylor, who's down there with Travis Pastrana. They're going to break down the tracks this week. Thanks, Jimmy. We are literally trackside right now at Ryan Seif's house. Travis, you're going to give us the guaranteed rate track breakdown. Well, four events, very unique. We're starting with almost straight rhythm. Now, this year, Ryan's added a doozy. There's an over-under cross coming out of the one corner, which makes it almost straight. Then we go to not quite flat track. This is going to be awesome because the bikes that they're going to be riding are not meant for jumps. However, it's not quite flat, and there are some big jumps out there. Then we go to awesome cross, like super cross, but way more awesome. The final event, Harder Enduro. Just like Hard Enduro, but harder. <laughs> well, this is gonna be another great day of racing. Back over to you, Jimmy. Thanks, JT. Well, Piranha, we talked about teams earlier. There may be some people out there that didn't catch the first show. So let's recap the nine teams that are out here at the Pit Bike Triple Crown. Yeah, so we got Team Pit Viper. And as you know, pit bike racing is a dangerous sport. We've lost a couple riders. So Team Guaranteed Rate's got a replacement rider with Bud Windham. Power Plus has k Dog himself riding. Therabody, Zip Recruiter, who's on their fourth replacement rider as of now, TB Parts, Black Rifle Coffee, Traxxas, with Smagical back in the mix, and Wild Mike's Pizza. And as we mentioned before, it is a very tight points race on the team challenge thus far. But right now, we're almost set to kick off our first race of the day, and that is almost straight rhythm. Now, we did this last year, couple of changes in 2021. We've got an over-under jump this time around, and now we're going three deep in the start gate. So my question for you is, how is that going to change the dynamic of the racing? Well, you'll notice we'd kind of just do whatever we want out here, right? So two wide, typical kind of straight rhythm drag racing. Well. Why not add a third rider in there, take out the center line, kind of let him just race moto on it and see what happens, right? It's gonna be a little more action for you and it'll make things move a little smoother and it gets us down to our main event of three people. We've got six heats of three and it's winter moving on to the next round. Let's get to it. And they're off. Oh, big Ooh. crash. Cody Cam is down. Greg Duffy on the outside, not getting the jump that he wanted. How did Cody Cam crash already? We got a little bit of a bog, but look at Greg Duffy giving Sipes, all he can handle. Oh. Here we go, the over-under, this is it. This is for the win right here in the whoops. Brian Sipes might be out, first race in his own house. And Greg Duffy, Maryland Wrecking Crew is continuing. You really crushed that one though. You had it, you had it. We got some bike problems going on with everybody, but you came in, you came in on top. Yeah, man, uh, it's an awesome course. Uh, definitely uh, the water didn't help. Um, but uh, yeah, bikes are bikes are a little boggy today. Hopefully we get it figured out. Most importantly, you just dusted Ryan Sipes in his own backyard. Hey, somebody's gotta do it. <laughs> All right, boys, here we go. Heat number two, Caleb Carter, Kevin Windham, Dusty Weigel. Here we go, come on. Oh, that inside line does not look good, but look, Joe, two, three wide. Dusty going deep, Kate about to lead, looking good. Carter closing on him. Here we go, Carter gonna go inside here. Oh no, he's running him wide. Oh, that's it, that was a big move. Caleb Carter taking it to Kevin Windham and laughing as he's coming through the whoops. I have to say, quite the competition in your heat going against Kevin Windham himself and Dusty Weigel, a master of the pit bike, but you took the win. Yeah, that was, uh, I was a little worried about that would come into it. I had some nerves up there and uh, 
yeah, happy I was able to get the inside gate with first gate pick and then uh, stuffed him a little bit in that corner up there. I feel like he had a little bit of bike advantage, but we'll give it to him. Uh, I heard 40 plus gets the big wheel, so that's cool with me, but it was a fun race for sure. Well, you know, last time when we were out here for the Bluegrass Brawl, you had quite some issues with the whoops. It seems like you've got rid of those now. Oh, I don't know. We gotta, we're gotta. we gonna have to wait, you know, until after the weekend's over, because I feel like uh, these whoops are still the same. So uh, we're just gonna try to be a little bit more cautious this time. Well, some amazing racing to get it started. When we come back, we're gonna find out who takes the win at the Almost Straight Rhythm here in Kentucky. Welcome back everyone to the Bluegrass Brawl here in Vine Grove, Kentucky. We're down to the semifinal portion of the Almost Street Rhythm event. Before we get to it, let's check in with JT, who is trackside. Oh yes, we're about to get to some racing. This is the staging area where everybody's waiting, talking trash to each other. We hope they're talking trash to each other. They better be talking trash to each other because a lot of them deserve it. All right, so heat number three, we got our number three seed. It's Troy Smalls going up against Jimmy Hill, the number nine seed, and we got Becca Sheets in the mix. Oh, and we are off. Troy Smalls taking the whole shot on this one, but Jimmy Hill right there, the two Black Rifle Coffee teammates head to head right now. Troy Smalls pulling a bigger lead, going into the double, onto the, the vert, and into that berm. Troy Smalls, oh, Troy Smalls is down on the berm. Troy had over a second of a lead has now <laughs> fallen down. Jimmy Hill going into the whoops and taking the win on this one. Becca Sheets, Troy Smalls. You are in third place overall. Go down in the one turn on this and lose first place. I thought it was a straight rhythm, not a turning track. And I, uh, and I turned and then I went down. I'm sorry, Black Rifle Coffee. I'll do better next time. Heat number four saw hometown hero Justin Poosides take down flat track pro Johnny Lewis and his buddy from Kentucky, Travis Hardcastle. Who now finds himself in a stacked semifinal round that includes Greg Duffy and Caleb Joe Dirt Carter. You guys are the fast semi. Did you know that? I did not know that. I don't know who's in the other semi, but I know this one's pretty stacked. Heat number five saw Phil Smashville Smashies return to glory as he won his first triple crown heat post spinal cord injury. Oh my God! Coming out! <laughs> Killing it right there. What happened? Woo. Well, what happened is uh, my friend Corey gave me that win. <laughs> Thanks, Corey. <laughs> I appreciate it. It's been a while since I won anything, so she's a nice girl and she let me have that one. There you go, running Woo. up to the semifinals from here. Congratulations. And finally, in Heat 6, motocross veteran Jarrett Stank Dog Stanky put the smackdown on Young Guts Bud Windham and Tyler Behrman. Trevor Behrman, you didn't pull it off for us today. It's Tyler, but maybe Trevor will do better next time. All right, Kyle. So first to two semis, you got Greg Duffy, the number seven seed, with Jimmy Hill, the number nine seed, and Smagical. Here we go, we're off. Greg Duffy with the whole shot, starting for the center gate. Did not expect a center gate whole shot, but it's looking pretty good right now. Jimmy Hill still staying in the fight. Smagical, keep it up best he can. Oh, they are neck and neck right now. We'll see which lines they decide to take coming into this turn. This is it. Jimmy Hill going for the lead. Jimmy Hill, oh! Oh, still in the fight, into the whoops. Oh, oh. Duffy pulls it out. Oh, oh, oh man, one that was awesome. One more would have got Hill on that one. Greg Duffy. Battle of the Bulls. Rolling into the final. This is going to put some points on the board for you. Yeah, man. Uh, been having a rough go at it, but uh, hopefully my luck's turning around. Ryan, what do you think about this race here? No, I just realized how awesome this is because now it's not a slow guy in the middle. He's a fast guy, and he's got a little bit of a head start but the guys behind him are fast too, so this is this three wide thing was a really good idea. Yeah, Stank Dog's coming in almost 0.8 seconds faster than Pooh overall. That's a lot. That's a lot on this little bit track, so this is gonna be good. Joe Dirt, Pooh, and Stank Dog, three that we really actually had, had our money on to win this overall thing, because there is a lot of talent up on that plank. They coming in clean, Joe Dirt scrubbing, backing off a little bit. Stank Dog right on Pooh's heels, but this is where Joe Dirt makes up his time. Joe Dirt really takes.
taking advantage of that power to weight ratio of that 110 cc motorcycle. This turn gets interesting. Who's going wide? Who's going in? Poo with Steak Dog right on his heels, but Poo for the win. Poo, you guys neck and neck heading into the turn, but you made the decision to go wide and it paid off. Yeah, everybody's been out front, has been going inside, but the outside's cooler, and I think I'm gonna stick with that the whole way. All right, well, you're headed to the final now to face off against Greg Duffy. Sweet, let's take him out. It's the LCQ, so we have two of our three finalists, the rest of the pack lining up from slowest to fastest. It's one lap, and the first person across the Zip Recruiter finish line gets that third and final spot into the final round. Milko, and they're gone. Who we got? We got uh, oh, people dropping in from the back, people <laughs> dropping in from the side. Oh man, Troy Smalls in the lead! It looks like it's coming down to Troy Smalls and Dustin Weigel for the lead right now. Who gets the final spot? Windham in third, Dusty, Dusty Weigel flipping. flipping. The people's in second champ. place. Troy Smalls coming around. This is gonna put him in the main event if he can keep it. Oh, this is really good for Team Black Rifle Coffee because Troy is in third place overall. Troy Smalls going to the main event. It's the final here at the almost straight rhythm portion. Greg Duffy, two sides in the number three seed, Troy Smalls, and they are set as they are in the guaranteed rate start. Troy Smalls with a good start, but this is where Pooh really has an advantage. He is very fast through here. Pooh taking the lead in front of Troy, but Troy keeping his position. Really, they are going into these jumps neck and neck. This is where it's really gonna pay off. Who's going where? Troy going wide, Pooh going underneath. Troy Smalls cutting out of the loops in first place. Troy taking the lead, taking the win. That's 18 points for Team Black Rifle Coffee. Troy Smalls with the win. Wow. End up making the whoops barely. Almost losing it there. And uh, we'd call that a win. Wow. Yes. That is 18 more points on the board for you overall, which could possibly change your position. Let's go back to these guys and see where it's at. So how about that finish? You have Troy Smalls who gets in the LCQ, crosses the finish line first, then he ends up taking the win in the whole event. Yeah, thought his day was over when he had that spill in the corner. There's no room for mistakes out there, right? But he battled back through, took the overall win, and kind of moved him up in the points. I was gonna say, big points up for grabs. Speaking of that, what does that do to our overall standings now? All right, so in first place, we have Caleb Carter with 64 points. Troy Smalls and Ryan Sipes are tied at 61 points behind that. Justin Sipes sitting at 57, Stank Dog at 52, and Greg Duffy at 50 to round out your top six. Well, we are just getting started here at the Sipes Pit Bike Championship. Plenty more racing still to come, but first, let's get to know one of our nine teams a little bit better. Hey guys, Travis Pastrana here. This is Team Guaranteed Rate. Definitely the powerhouse team, I'd say, of everyone coming into this event. You have Dusty Weigel, probably the best pit biker in the world. He's gonna be waving to everyone while he's doing backflips, looking back, because you can't wave to people that are behind you. You know, it's really hard unless you turn around. So Dusty's gonna be out front the whole time. And then we got Wyndham. Not the old Wyndham, the, the younger, faster, lighter Wyndham Bud over here. And Bud, for guaranteeing rate, is gonna be the absolute fastest on the track. He's not gonna be worrying about the flips, but I guarantee you, he is gonna rock this thing. Trav's one of my best friends. It's a massive bummer that he got injured trying to help our team out by wearing out Ryan Sipes and it kind of backfired. But luckily we got him as a coach and a mentor for the team, so and we got a great replacement in Bud Windham. So yeah, um, rest in peace, Travis's knee. Um, I'm looking forward to Sipes' woods, woods race. I like, I like the woods a lot and have fun on that. I like the flat track too. I have a pretty long background with pit bikes. I've been doing it a long time, but I also took a bit of a hiatus through doing live tours with Nitro Circus for the last decade. So it's nice to get back on the steed and get out there and bang some bars. Get the whole shot, do backflips, win. It's pretty simple, really. If you're not first, you're last. Welcome back, everyone, to the Bluegrass Brawl. This sequel, it's the second stop on the 2021 Pit Bike Triple Crown. We've got one race in the books, and coming up next, it's not quite flat track. And with a name like that, Piranha, that uh, kind of lends one to think that uh, it's not going to be your typical course. Yeah, as we stated before, we just kind of do what we want out here, right? Not quite flat track is a bit of an understatement because it's not flat at all. There's jumps in it, there's off cambers, there's two different lines, there's rights, there's left. It's just 
total mayhem out there. And it's all 18 riders riding on the course at once. Half of them are on pit bikes, the other half are on flat track Sunday pit bikes. Crazy tends to be the name of the game here at Nitro Circus. Right now, let's send it down to JT, who's trackside. Just like everything that we do with Nitro Circus, it has to be modified and has to be a little crazier. This was supposed to be a flat track race, but as you can see, it now includes jumps and an S turn. So we'll see how this unfolds. Oh, and they're off! Here we go, Berriman off to a good start. Oh, 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 big crash, big crash. Bang dog goes down. Berriman out to a lead. Followed closer by Wyndham and Dusty. Kevin Wyndham, the only one on a Sunday in the top three right now, is on Beerman's heels. Corey Steen is down halfway. Can we get a red flag on this? What are we doing? It looks like we had a few mechanical failures in there. Two riders are currently out of the race. Kevin Wyndham leading this one. Looks like Behrman lost the chain. Wyndham full lead as he chases down Bilko. Kevin Wyndham still in first place on the Sunday. Uh-oh, here we go. Jumping onto the inside. Who's going for the lead right oh, here? Oh, it stuffs him. Dusty Weigel going for the lead. Passes K-Dub, Kevin Wyndham. Wyndham tries to jump back in. Behrman unlaps himself. Oh, Kevin to the inside. He's pushing Dusty out, and Kevin Wyndham takes first. The older Wyndham, the more geriatric there, and they're coming up on Corey Steed here. That's a lapper. Dude, Wyndham is on a roll. Jumping these doubles on a Sunday like it's a dirt bike. Kevin Wyndham looking back at Dusty, just making sure that he's still back there in second place. This is the last lap, last lap. Kevin Wyndham in first place. Dusty Weigel in second. Ryan Sipes in third. It's almost all KLXs up front. Going all out, and then you have Behrman who just, oh, Behrman is down again. What a hard oh, crash. Pile up right there. He just took out someone on the lead lap. That's I'm probably not the way to do that. I'm telling you, Chad, Wyndham to come out here to lose. Kevin coming around the final turn. This is the checkered flag. Ladies and gentlemen, Kevin Wyndham takes the win. 18 points on the board. Right here on the first final of Almost Flat Track. And Dusty Weigel, second place. Ryan Sipes in third. Kevin, finding that lead, finding that power. You were just owning Dusty in every turn. Well, we finally found the old man sport, man. It felt amazing. <laughs> I felt like I had the, what it took to win, but I, I didn't want to do it without some rubbing racing. You know what I'm saying? I had to, I had to put it in on whoever's behind me. No disrespect to, to Dusty. Really, I was hoping it was Joe Dirt behind me because I really want to smack him around, but <laughs> Dusty was behind me, so that's all I had. You know, when you're going up against one of the greatest of all time, just not getting dead last is great. So, you know, I was trying to stick to his back wheel, but he definitely made it a, he made it a challenge. And honestly, getting my butt whooped by K-Dub, you know, it's still kind of an honor, so. Honestly, I don't think anyone has seen a Sunday get air like you were on the back jumps. Woo. You were rocking that whole double. I actually forgot I was on a Sunday the first try, and I slammed into that tabletop, but uh, she held up. They're a good bike. <laughs> awesome. Back over to you guys, Jimmy. After one main down, how crazy was that race? So much carnage, such tight grouping, but how about Kevin Windham coming out with that big win? I told you, man, he takes those points seriously. He doesn't get off the couch just to do anything half-assed. Well, there's full points up for grabs of both of these mains. One down, one more to go. Here we go, not quite flat track. Brought to you by Power Plus, main number two. Good to go. Tyler Behrman should have the whole shot on this. We're off. We've got Behrman getting the whole shot a second time with Troy Smalls hot on his heels. That's a second whole shot for Behrman. Maybe he won't suffer a catastrophic loss. Troy Small's cutting on the inside, but just doesn't have the power. Oh, oh, we have guys going down. That's Carter down. No, uh, Hardcastle that time. Hardcastle giving uh, everyone the number one sign. I guess he feels like that was a uh, foul play, but that foul play is part of the game out here. He was just letting me know, strike one, and then he's going to take him out. There goes Tank Dog having a great run up into third. Uh, looks like he might be able to go. Oh, look, yeah. at that, look at that pass. I was just going to say, Behrman's looking a lot better out there, and it looks like he stalled the bike out. No, he didn't stall. Uh, that was uh, that was all Troy Smalls going into the takeout move. Troy barely keeping that lead. Both of these guys on their 110s. This is where I think Stank God's going to sneak in, going on the inside, but he's losing. Oh, he's boxing Troy out. Stank Dog taking the lead. Troy in second place. Kevin Windham. 
now in third, has snuck all the way up the pack. Kevin Windham really getting that pressure on Troy Smalls. Kevin Windham taking the inside, boxing him out. Oh! Troy now in third place, Joe in fourth, Kevin Windham in second, Stank Dog taking the win. Stank Dog checking flag. Second place Windham, third place Smalls, Joe Dunn in the fourth. Then you got the Sipes brothers, fifth and sixth. Maryland Rank Drew coming in around the corner. Merriman Hill and Cody Cam, Dusty, Lewis, Smagical, and Tyler McCalla finishes out your pack. Wow, what a race. This was a lot of points on the board. A lot of points on the board out there. Now, you just win in this race, putting 18 more points on the board for you. The next event is the Supercross. What's your strategy going into there? Oh, the Supercross event, that's that's my strategy there. That's my my event there. I come from Supercross, so does Ryan Sipes. So uh, hopefully uh, one of us old dogs can take it, but hopefully I'm the younger dog that's going to win. You just targeted Joe Dirt. We could see it from up there. We saw when you just said, I'm coming for you, and then you made it your mission. It, yeah, well, you know, I didn't hide my hand very well. That was my mission. I'm glad y'all got it on camera, got to enjoy it. It was, uh, I was in the second row. I said, man, on the outside of the second row at that, I said, there's only one way to get through here, and that's just to go in there and make it your own. So came inside Joe Dirt. Hey, you got to see his uh, road rash from my front tire. He never let go of the arm, stayed in the corner, but the knobbies were just eating him up. So that second main did not disappoint either. It's Stank Dog that gets the win this time around. But how about Kevin Windham? He's got a first and now a second. That's a lot of points, Piranha. Yeah, one-two finish for K-Dub is going to give him the overall, and he's the winner of this event. And there's only more fun still to come when we come back. But right now, let's meet Team Traxxas. My name's Tyler Behrman. I'm 29 years old from Temecula, California. And this week at the Pit Bike Triple Crown, I'm racing for Team Traxxas, the fastest name in radio control. What's up, I'm Phil Smodgy out of Elkhorn, Wisconsin. I used to be a professional motorcycle rider, now I train cats and try and ride bikes. The course out here is pretty insane. I can honestly say these are by far the biggest pit bike jumps that I've seen in person. Um, it's gonna be tough, there's gonna be some, some bar banging. Not too much shenanigans in the turns because the jumps are so big, you gotta nail your turns to get the jump. So, should be really good racing. I started playing with RCs back when I was a kid. Um, I went through this crazy injury and got paralyzed and actually I used radio controls as the first way to get my hands and fingers to move in like a smooth manner. So I actually use, I use RCs for therapy like for the last two and a half years of my life. So hoping uh, we can pull off at least the win in the RC car race. Welcome back everyone to Kentucky and the Sipes Pit Bike Championship. We are two races down with two to go, Piranha. We talked about that tight points battle at the top of the show. How do the individual standings look right now? Yeah, I don't think anybody expected to be this close of a race, but right now Ryan Sipes has a little bit of a lead, but second, third, and fourth place are so tight. Caleb Carter, Justin Sipes, and Troy Smalls only separated by a point. Then you have Stank Dog and KW, Kevin Wyndham still in the mix, right? So that's the individual standings. What does that do right now to the numbers with the team standings? Well, TB Parts has a pretty good lead. Then you have Power Plus, Black Rifle Coffee, and Pit Viper. So awesome cross. This will encompass the entire course out here at the Sipes Compound. Any changes here in 2021? Yeah, I mean, it's it's super cross on pit bikes. Like, what's not to love? It's it's gnarly, it's tight, it's technical, it's gonna be fast, and it's all 18 riders on the gate at once for two main events. So like we did in the flat track, it's two main events, which means you've got two opportunities to get a full set of 18 points. They're lining up in the gate. Let's send it down to JT Trackside. We had some last minute track adjustments. What was going on out there that you needed to fix? Yeah, we had it adjusted for flat track. Um, it didn't really work for Supercross with all this speed you had coming into it. Everybody was jumping. It made it one line. It was kind of dangerous. I know everything we're doing out here is dangerous, but that was a little too much. So we had to adjust it a little bit. I think we're going to be good now. Well, you guys jumped in the bulldozers and had this ready to go within 10 minutes. That was amazing. Hey, you know what was cool is having my, one of my heroes, Kevin Windham, in my skid steer building the other roller. It was good. That was sweet. <laughs> Moving dirt with your hero. Let's get this race started. 20 seconds. Yeah. For Awesome Cross, there's no qualifying. So basically, the better you are in points, the worse your starting position is going to be today for Awesome Cross. We're off, and Wyndham squeezing on the inside, really getting in there. That is impressive, guaranteed right out to the lead. We have a Wyndham out in front, and you know, his dad is actually from the second row all the way up to fifth place. Pretty impressive. Corey Steed missing the first two jumps, still hanging in there. This would be crazy for the points. 
for Team Guaranteed Rain. Well, Kenny Beerman, you got Bud Windham pulling in front of this race, still maintaining the lead position. What's going on out there? It's, it's Tyler, but I'll let that one go. We got Windham Jr. here in the lead, just getting passed through the whoops, but hopefully he can put it back to the old man and hopefully he comes out on top. I'd love to see Junior beat, beat old K-Dub. Now we're finally seeing Cody Kim really shine right now. Oh, and Wyndham makes the pass, it looks like. Here we go. Wyndham is extremely aggressive out there right now. He is going for this win. He's riding these lines tight out here right now, and it looks like he's making the pass as we speak. Stank Dog coming on the inside. How do they get a stack up in the over-under? K-Dub in first, takes the over. Stank tries to go from third to first, but makes it into second with an inside line right there. Oh, Stank off the bike, push types up the inside. Cody Kim pulls ahead. Kevin Windham still leading this race. The oldest man on the track right now, just completely riding as aggressive as I've seen him ride all weekend. The big dog himself, K-Dub. Oh. K-Dub just off the rev limiter pin. Look at this battle for second place, though. It is second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. I think K-Dub's got this. Might have two back-to-back -back wins here. Almost flat track and the awesome cross. Joe Dirt, seventh place. This is the tightest racing I've ever seen. Stank Dog now in second place. He's past Cody Kim. Coming into the transfer. Kevin just taking that thing so smooth. Stank Dog close behind him, not taking the inside like he has before. Stank Dog has one last turn to pull this out on Kevin Windham, and I don't see it happening. And here it goes. Oh, Stank Dog head to head with Windham right now. This is a close race. Close race. Oh! Kevin Windham and Stank Dog with a photo finish. Wow! Did you see that last year? And I really thought that Wyndham was not going to be able to do it, but he stood up, sucked it up, and was able to take the win. Kevin Wyndham, victory lap, checkered flag in the air. Ryan, that was an aggressive race. We saw Ryan out there that we haven't seen yet in the series. That was the most intense race we've had of this whole thing so far, man. It was bar banging, block passing, everybody almost going down as we're pushing so hard, but man, it was. That's what Supercross is supposed to be, so it was perfect. I tell you, I cannot believe the mistake that Stank Dog made. I mean, I left the inside wide open for him. I was fully expecting to rub some plastic, rub some paint, bend a shifter, and he didn't take me out. God, you know, I hope that don't affect him too bad in the points. <laughs> Stank Dog, you came from the middle of the pack and just started headhunting exactly like you predicted, taking second overall. Man, scary moments out there for me. Um, Good race, good job by Kevin Windham. Um, you know, I just got off the phone with Villeman. He says, give that a little payback for me back in Phoenix, back in the day. K-Dub, Villeman. Villeman gave me the phone call, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, JT. Awesome cross main one is in the books, and that finish, how about that end? I mean, Kevin Windham and Stank Dog battling it out, and K-Dub gets the win by just a half a tire, Piranha. Yeah, that was such a close finish. I don't think we could have set that up any better, but uh, K-Dub, Proving that he's got what it takes to take a win out here today. We've got main two still to come, but first, let's meet another one of our teams. My name is Corey Steed. This is my teammate, Becca Sheets. We ride for Team Therabody. I normally race a Kawasaki 250 in the woods and uh, kind of dabble with pit bikes occasionally. Um, I've raced two pit bike championships. I won one, or I won both. Um, and uh, here we are. I'm racing for Team Therabody, and they make percussion therapy tools to help with recovery, um, massage guns. So it's super helpful, especially in the sport that we do because we're always sore, always beat up. My goals for this week at the Farm 14 Throwdown are just to keep it safe so I can make it through the rest of the week, but um, definitely want to show these guys what's up. So there's some really awesome woods riders here. We got Ryan Sipes, who's a world champion and Travis Pastrana did decide to dabble in some woods recently, but we just beat them both at the Ironman GNCC in Indiana yesterday. So I think if you put us on pit bikes, our power to weight ratio is a little better than theirs, and I think we're gonna wax them.
Welcome back, everyone, to the Sipes Pit Bike Championship. We are smack dab in the middle of Awesome Cross. One main down, one left to go. Our top three finishers earned some points in that first go around, Piranha. However, they have to re rack now. Those guys have to start at the back of the pack because it's reverse order for seating in round two. Yeah, I'll tell you, I think Troy Small's got kind of a, a short end of the stick on that race, and uh, he looks so good in practice. He's your winner from straight rhythm. I think he's got what it takes to take the win in main number two, but we'll have to see. They're lining up in the start. Let's send it down to JT. Now, that was some of the good, most aggressive riding that we have seen in pit bike history since we've been doing this. How excited are you for the second round? No, it's great. The, the reverse order is just making it absolutely awesome. And I want to make a note that Power Plus just took the lead with a replacement rider in the overall championship standings. All right, I can't wait. Let's get this race started. Some of you probably wonder why the 2004 and 5 pit bike world champion isn't participating. Had a bit of a crash at the Supercross, fractured some ribs, took some skin off, you know, all that stuff, and um, basically was just too scared. So I'm on the sidelines yelling at people, making sure they behave if they don't. Main number two and awesome cross. Who's getting that Black Rifle coffee hole shot? Greg Duffy inside, along with Tyler Behrman's replacement, Brett Q, and almost takes out Joe Dirt. Joe Dirt off to a great start from the second row into fourth place. Greg Duffy with the hole shot, as expected, but Corey Steed again trying to go around the outside of Duffy. Might have lost a spot there, but picks it up. Steed going for the lead. Wyndham's another one to watch. He's sitting in fourth, maybe fifth position right now. I think he's got what it takes. Maybe battles way back to first. Boost Sipes dropping inside of Steed. Oh, Steed takes out Kevin Wyndham. Oh, we have a wreck in the bunch. It's BQ, the fill-in for Beerman. He's to second. Stank Dog up to second. Where did Duff go? Duff's sitting in third right now. It's Joe Dirt just took the lead. Joe Holy Dirt's cow. Got a solid lead. That's your winner from this event last year. Didn't do too good in the last main, but uh, he might be a hard one to catch. Wow, look at Ryan Sipes through the whoops. Just picks up four people inside of Corey Steen into fourth. As we finish the first lap, it is Joe Dirt in first, Pooh Sipes in second, Greg Duffy in third, and Ryan Sipes in fourth. Oh, through the whoops. Everybody's coming up short on that second half of the field, not being able to jump that. It's going to separate everyone pretty far. I expect a little bit more about Maryland Wrecking Crew. Greg Duffy almost goes over the handlebar, and Ryan Sipes into third place. Now, you got Caleb Carter and Pooh Sipes. They are teammates leading this race right now. I'm not sure if there's too much team strategy going to happen here, but uh, I think everyone just kind of gunning for the win. I tell you, TV Park's out to a, a good run right now. It's really going to help the strategy. But uh, if you look at uh, Team Pit Viper right there, they're in fifth and sixth right now. Kevin Wyndham just getting around Greg Duffy for fifth place. And look right behind them, Corey Steed, the female rider up in the mix. is pretty impressive. Kevin Wyndham right behind Ryan Sipes right now. Let's see if he can take him on this lap. Ryan Sipes doesn't have to push it too hard to maintain his lead here uh, in the overall. Man, look at this. I tell you, Pooh Sipes, no love loss between the teammates. Coming up on his teammate uh, from TV Parts. And I, I would say that Pooh has a chance this win. Yeah, but his team strategy, I'm not sure how hard he's going to push his teammate, or uh, maybe it's every man for himself out there. Who knows? It's got to be every man for himself. I think uh, Pooh Sipes behind Ryan Sipes for the overall. And Ryan and Wyndham back and forth. Holy cow, Ryan takes Wyndham out, but Wyndham somehow stays on his wheels. Kevin Wyndham taking the fourth place spot, gunning for Joe Dirt. We may only see him get to Stank Dog, but I promise it'll be worth it. Joe Dirt actually with a commanding lead now, closely followed by Pooh Sipes. Kevin Wyndham coming up hard. And here it is, the final turn. Joe Dirt taking first, Pooh Sipes taking second. And Stank Dog taking third. Let's see how Joe Dirt is doing over here. Finally, getting your strategy in there, getting out front as fast as you can, and then not letting anybody even close. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, definitely the strategy. I actually uh, crashed pretty hard in that side lap and uh, almost came out with the whole shot and then uh, did what I planned to do and tried to pull away from everybody and get away from the carnage. That was awesome. That's going to do very well for you in the overall points. Poo! Chasing Joe Dirt the whole race. Yeah, it was uh, gnarly. I knew <clears throat> I seen him come out and get out front, and uh, I knew my only chance was to be right behind him because that dude checks out if you don't put pressure on him. And man, I couldn't catch him. I was waiting for a mistake, and he didn't make any. And we went one two though. TB parts one two. I'll take it. Stank Dog starting in the middle of the pack, and then just 
coming up and eventually finishing third. Like, you must have transferred eight times. Yeah, uh, I think I was actually dead last going around the first corner. Um, battling with Ryan, we were, banging, we were banging bars the whole first corner. And uh, came from last to third. Um, it was more laps. I think I could have ran Joe Dirt down for sure. Now, going into this extra hard enduro, do you have any sort of strategy to this, knowing that there is a lot of obstacles out there and you're not really used to? Yeah, keep my feet and legs on the pegs as much as possible. <laughs> awesome. Well, that was an excellent main event. Let's go back to Jimmy and the guys. Awesome Cross is in the books and it definitely lived up to the hype. And congratulations to our winner. We have one more race to go. It's the Harder Enduro where we send all 18 athletes into the woods. But before we go, let's get to know another one of our teams. My name is Johnny Lewis. I race the American Flat Track Series. I'm racing for the Wild Mike's Pizza. My name is Travis Hardcastle, 28 years old from Brandenburg, Kentucky. I would describe my riding style as loose, hanging on for dear life. My specialty, the TT, might come in favor. You know, I race flat track. And in the woods is uh, kind of something I grew up doing too, so I think we can come in. If we're, we're a top 10 guy, I'm happy. I'd say the biggest competition, definitely uh, Ryan Sipes, Who Sipes, Joe Dirt. Saving the bike is the biggest thing. Actually not breaking the motorcycle in half. We, these guys are pushing these things to beyond their limits. I don't think when these things are built, they ever were designed to do this. The goal for this week is to um, get out, get some good starts, get out front, um, put my sponsors in a good position to get seen, make some memories racing with uh, the Nitro Circus crew. And if I can get a lot of free pizza while I'm here, that'd be great. <laughs> Are back for the Sipes Pit Bike Championship, and well, we are down to the finale. It is the harder enduro piranha. We did this last year, and it was the nemesis of the riders. I mean, everybody came out of this a little busted up, and the equipment as well. And for 2021, we've made it bigger and even scarier. Yeah, it's for sure the hardest discipline these guys face out here. And Trav actually asked them to tone it down a little bit, but the Sipes brothers actually went the other way and made it harder enduro and made it bigger, sketchier, and uh, more dangerous for these riders. So. I don't know if we're gonna get through this thing in one piece. It's the last chance to get points here in Kentucky. We send them into the woods for 20 minutes plus one lap. It is the harder enduro. Dead start, the riders have to start down the ways a little bit, have to run to the bikes. So it should be pretty entertaining to watch them hobble over to their bikes and get started. Welcome to Harder Enduro, round four of the Sipes Challenge out here. And it is going to be absolutely epic. We're all in the first turn and oh my gosh, it's the whole shot. Somebody got the whole shot. All right, so here we go with the harder enduro. You heard the starter pistol for the start. You can hear them. They come running up this ravine and they've got to contend with logs. They've got rocks. They've got all kinds of stuff. We're going to have to see who gets out to an early lead right here, but they're going to be trading elbows. They're going to be banging bars. The last time we did this, it was all out carnage. So this will not disappoint here in 2021. Smagical in the lead right now of the harder enduro. And Troy Smalls of Team Black Rifle skipping the water all around. Looks like Troy Smalls into the lead. Troy Smalls is gonna be untouchable. This guy launching into Pooh's basement. There's a lot of poo in that corner. No way, Smashgull second place. Smashgull getting taken high by Stank Dog. There you got uh, Pooh Sipes into Pooh's basement. Ryan Sipes, Greg Duffy launching out of there. We're here at the obstacle named Kick Rocks as we're waiting the riders to come through on their second lap. I believe they're coming now. Let's see who's in the lead. Troy Smalls has a pretty good lead here, and I expected him to do very well out here. Johnny brake checks Becca Sheets, and Becca stuck. She's about to do a front flip. Somebody film this. Coming around, Corey Steed. Here we go. The over under jump, and oh, she goes over and bam! What a crash by Corey Steed. Uh, that's about half the field. I feel like half the field has still not made it around. And Troy Small is absolutely dominating. This was his event to win. So here we go, coming around on lap number two, and it looks like it's Troy Small down the lead. Stank Dog catching and passing Troy Smalls. My money was on Troy Smalls, but I tell you, Stank Dog is riding the wheels off of that machine. Third place, you got Smagical jumping in here. And then Pooh Sipes jumping into Pooh's basement. In fourth place, ahead of Joe Dirt. Harder cross is tough. Here we go, first place, and Troy Smalls back into the lead with a no footer jumping down the hill. I tell you, these two have been going back and forth every single lap. 
Oh, Stank Dog is down. Stank is down. Stank went from second to seventh. He is back behind Cybe Smatchical, rounding out the top eight. Whoa, what has happened? We have Troy Smalls now battling with the Sipes brothers and Cody Kim coming into the mix. Here we go, Pooh Sipes coming into Pooh's basement in the lead. Ryan Sipes in second. Troy Smalls dropping all the way back to fourth place on that lap. The Sipes brothers, although it looked like they were gonna be running fifth and sixth after the end of the first lap, Somehow on lap three, found some cheater lines that they probably developed and were able to go one and two. Smatchical dropping a few spots as well as Troy Smalls coming inside that top 10. It was hard to tell from where we were at, but we definitely saw you battling your brother quite a bit, but you took the win. Yeah, thanks, man. That was a wild race. Uh, kudos to Small, uh, Smalls and uh, Phil. They laid a killer track out. At a certain point about halfway, I was like, save the bike, because we were going through some gnarly stuff, and I saw people crashed out, and I'm like, save the bike and get through this thing. Ooh, going back and forth with your brother, but after, take it out, stink dog. <laughs> and Troy. Yeah, uh, Troy got stuck on shell shock. It was, it was the hardest thing, for sure, and the best time I made it up was when he stuck, and I bumped him as I went by, and that's how I got the lead, and then, Ryan's just too good in the woods. He's he's done it for too long, and I'm I'm a supercross guy. I don't like trees, but uh, it was a blast. Harder Enduro is in the books, and it definitely lived up to its name, Piranha. But it's no surprise when it's all said and done, the Sipes boys come out on top again. Yeah, I think in some sick, twisted way, Ryan Sipes actually had a good time out there. But all the other bikes and riders are pretty mangled right now, and I'm, hopefully they can regroup in time for Pastrana Lane. It has been a points race with some very, very tight grouping. And with three stops, what does this now do to the overall standings after two? Yeah, right now we have Ryan Sipes leading the overall, followed closely by his brother Pooh Sipes and then Caleb Carter. So we're not done yet. We still have Pastrana Land in the books. Now, what has Travis Pastrana got planned for the finale? Now, I'm not exactly sure what he's got up his sleeve, but he did tell me that everything on that track is going to be third gear plus. So it's probably going to be pretty big. It is definitely going to be exciting, and you won't want to miss it. That is a wrap from Vine Grove, Kentucky. I'm Jimmy Coleman. On behalf of myself, Trevor Piranha, JT, and Travis Pastrana, we thank you for watching. We'll see you at Pastrana Land. Kenny Beerman, you got Bud Windham pulling in front of this race, still maintaining the lead position. What's going on out there? It's it's Tyler, but I'll let that one go. All right, I'm here with Chuck Beerman right now. Uh, was checking Did this last week. It's Tyler. Trevor Beerman, pull it off for us. Though. It's Tyler, but maybe Trevor will do better next time. All right, Kyle. <laughs> Or a shoey and a shoey and a booty. It's a boot scoop boogie. Oh,
good. Taking the lead, taking the win. That's 18 points for Team Black Rifle Coffee. Joyce Smalls with the win. Wow!